Hello, and thank you for electing to listen to my submissions in this video. Today, I will discuss the future of Ukraine. Recently, there have been grand proclamations by the Western ruling elites concerning how once the war in Ukraine is over, Ukraine will be admitted as a member to both NATO and the European Union. Such talk is ludicrous and demonstrates one of the following. Either the Western ruling elites are delusional or they are merely continuing to employ worthless propaganda so as to justify to Western publics their ongoing political, economic and military support to the Ukrainian government. Either way, it is abundantly clear that vis-a-vis -vis the war in Ukraine, the West has grossly underestimated the political, economic and military capacity and resolve of the Russian Federation, and has also grossly underestimated the unity and resolve of the Russian people as a whole. Furthermore, it is the case that Russia can, will, and most importantly, is compelled to win the war in Ukraine. And subsequently, the day will come when Ukraine ceases to exist. But before I elaborate on that, I wish to dispel a myth which the West has peddled for 32 years now, namely that in 1991, the Ukrainian population achieved their freedom. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. In March of 1991, Mikhail Gorbachev, the Soviet leader, held a national referendum in the Soviet Union in which the Soviet people were asked whether they want to preserve the Soviet Union. Approximately 76% of the Soviet people voted to preserve the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. In the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, over 70% of the population there voted to preserve the USSR. However, this referendum is one that Western politicians, Western mainstream journalists, and so-called experts in the West refuse to talk about. Instead, they cite the December 1991 referendum, which was held in the Ukrainian SSR, to corroborate their false narrative that in 1991, the Ukrainian population achieved its freedom. Allow me to explain. In December of 1991, the leadership of the Ukrainian SSR, led by Leonid Kravchuk, which were intent on achieving power for themselves, held a referendum in the Ukrainian SSR. However, this referendum must be seen in the context of, firstly, the failed KGB coup against Gorbachev in August of 1991, which caused utter confusion all across the Soviet Union. And secondly, the December 1991 referendum, which was held in the Ukrainian SSR, was not legitimate because the aforementioned Kravchuk deliberately made the wording of the referendum ambiguous because most of the population of the Ukrainian SSR believed that they were asked as to whether they wanted autonomy from Moscow, not independence from Moscow. So that is why I say that the December referendum held in the Ukrainian SSR is illegitimate and instead 
the only legitimate result, referendum result, which was held in the Soviet Union in 1991, was the one in March of that year. Now, returning to the present day Ukraine, I estimate that the Russian armed forces has used between 10 to 15 percent of its overall capabilities in the war in Ukraine, a figure which is extremely small. And yet, despite having employed between 10 and 15 percent of its overall potential in Ukraine, the Russian armed forces currently control approximately 20% of Ukraine and have inflicted massive losses on the Ukrainian armed forces. Indeed, those losses amount to approximately 200,000, of which approximately 150,000 are fatal. Furthermore, because the Russian armed forces are fighting not just the Ukrainian army, but also NATO as a whole in Ukraine, the Russian armed forces have depleted the arsenals of many NATO members, such as America, Canada and Britain, so much so that independent military experts in America are of the opinion that it will take up to 10 years for America to replenish its military stockpiles. Now, given that the Russian armed forces have only used between 10 and 15% of its capabilities in Ukraine, what it has achieved to this date is quite astonishing. Again, the Russian armed forces control 20% of Ukraine, have inflicted 200,000 losses on the Ukrainian armed forces, and have depleted the arsenals of key NATO members. So, what will happen when the day comes, and no one should be under any illusion that that day will not come, because the day will come when Russia launches a massive offensive on numerous fronts in Ukraine, whereby it will increase quite dramatically what it currently is employing in Ukraine, which is, as I said, between 10 and 15 percent. You do not need to be a military expert to understand that when that day comes, this day will mark the end of the Ukrainian armed forces, will mark the end of the Ukrainian government, will mark the end of NATO's proxy war in Ukraine and will ultimately mark the end of Ukraine. So it is futile for the Western ruling elites to talk about the day when Ukraine is admitted as a member to NATO and the European Union because that day will not come. I said earlier on in this video that Russia is compelled to win in Ukraine. Allow me to explain that. Ever since Ukraine became a independent country in December of 1991, the West has coveted Ukraine, much to the consternation of not just the Russian leadership, but to the Russian people as a whole. Because a Ukraine which is in NATO would spell a calamity 
for Russian national security. For 30 years, up until the commencement of the Russian military campaign in Ukraine in February of 2022, the Russians had asked, told, warned the Americans not to expand their tentacles to Ukraine because Ukraine is of vital importance to Russian national security and to the overall Russian national identity. But alas, the Americans ignored the warnings from the Kremlin, and that is why there is a war in Ukraine today. But I said that the Kremlin is compelled to win the war in Ukraine. They are compelled to win the war in Ukraine because, let's talk hypothetically now, if the Russian army was to be defeated in Ukraine and was therefore to retreat from Ukraine, then the following day, Ukraine would be admitted to NATO as a member. Now, that is a scenario that the Kremlin and the Russian people as a, as a whole will not tolerate and will never allow to materialize. That is why Russia will ensure that it achieves victory in Ukraine and that the lands which are in Ukraine are absorbed into the Russian Federation. And Russia can win the war in Ukraine and win it convincingly by employing more of its potential in Ukraine. So that is why I say that talk by the Western ruling elites of Ukraine joining NATO is utterly laughable, is utterly nonsensical. But we have to differentiate the groups which comprise the Western ruling elites. It is plausible that the key groups which comprise the Western ruling elites, those who you will not see on television, those who you will not read about in newspapers, understand that Russia will win in Ukraine. At the same time, we have to remember that those groups on the periphery in the Western ruling elites, such as mainstream journalists and so-called experts in institutes and think tanks, are quite simply useful idiots who know nothing about Russia, who know nothing about Ukraine, and are motivated only by money and status. And therefore, the core groups which comprise the Western ruling elites simply employ mainstream journalists and so-called experts in think tanks and institutes to peddle their propaganda about the war in Ukraine and to peddle their propaganda about Russia as a whole. So, in concluding, the day will come very soon when Russia will launch an almighty offensive in Ukraine. And I believe that it is possible, possible, that because of the forces which the Russians are gathering in Belarus, the offensives could take, um, could, could be the following. A Russian army will enter Ukraine from Belarus and capture the Ukrainian-Polish border, thereby ending 
NATO military supplies to the Russian, to the Ukrainian armed forces. At the same time, a Russian army will enter Ukraine from Belarus and cut Ukraine in two by capturing the oblasts of Zhitomir and Vinnytsia. And a Russian army will enter Ukraine from Belarus and capture Kiev, thereby decapitating the Ukrainian government. And on top of that, there will be a Russian offensive in the east of Ukraine and in the south of Ukraine. We must remember that the total manpower that the Russian armed forces can assemble is approximately 25 million soldiers. Now, the Kremlin does not need to mobilize anywhere near that amount of soldiers and therefore will not do so. But I am of the opinion that ever since the Kremlin initiated mobilization in Russia for the war in Ukraine, that the Russians have gathered, in my opinion, probably near to one million soldiers, which will be sufficient for conducting multiple massive offensives in Ukraine. The West, for whatever reason, be it stupidity, ignorance, or merely propaganda, has depicted the Russian military, which is not just a military superpower, but a nuclear superpower, as a third-rate power, which, again, for anyone who has even an ounce of knowledge about military affairs, knows that to be preposterous nonsense. But again, we have to ask the question, who is believing that? Is the core of the Western ruling elites of that opinion regarding the Russian armed forces? I very much doubt it. I believe they, are, they have simply put it out um, for propaganda purposes. And at the same time, I have no doubt that the useful idiots in the West who comprise mainstream journalists and so-called experts in institutes and think tanks are of that opinion because they know nothing about military affairs and they know nothing about Russia as a whole. So Ukraine, as I wrote in my book, Arise Russia, The Return of Russia to World Politics, will not exist one day. I wrote Arise Russia in 2020, and the book was published in January of 2021. I said then in the book, and I have said ever since on television, that because of the endeavors of the Western ruling elites, the day will come when Ukraine ceases to exist because Russia will take military action. And in February of 2022, Russia took military action. The war is ongoing, not because the Russian military is a feeble force, but because NATO is fighting a proxy war against Russia. Because Russia is fighting against the most powerful military bloc in the world, which is led by a military superpower, namely the United States of America. And yet, despite that, the Russians continue to win in Ukraine. They continue to have the upper hand. The momentum is with the Russians. The Russians have inflicted massive losses on the Ukrainian armed forces and have depleted the military stockpiles of key NATO members, including America. Thank you, as ever, for taking the time 
to listen to my submissions and to listen to what my predictions for the future will be. As I said, what I have submitted in this video is what I wrote about in my book, Arise Russia, which was published before the Russian military campaign in Ukraine began. Should you wish to purchase a copy of Arise Russia, this can be done either by purchasing a copy directly from the publishing house or from Amazon, or alternatively, copies can be purchased directly from myself. Again, thank you for your time, and I hope you will be able to join me in a future video. Thank you very much.